you know what has been I've been I've probably talked to each of you individually about this uh, criterion channel has been my go-to like yeah. when, I, when i'm into so jealous i'm like i need just a filter <laughs> mm. i was talking to a friend recently and he was talking he i i make fun of him for being like uh, basically like a slave to imdb he's just like he's like i will not watch anything that is beneath the seven you know he's like oh so now you have your own filter you know to watch <laughs> movies as a criterion channel and you know i am guilty about of that a little bit what, but I don't, that, I don't love everything on there. Isn't but Isn't that filter it, just pretension? Well, it's is that just, a word? No, it's just, it's, it's, it's people have curated this I'm to joking, say, hey, this yeah, is better worth, people have. This is worth seeing. A higher, better than you a, class of people. A film, <laughs> esch, a film echelon of yes. people to which I have never come across, really, in real life. Yeah. Maybe a few people who are like really respect The type of people who sit around talking about movies form. on podcasts. <laughs> the world elite. No. <laughs> People just do it for a living, <laughs> but I uh, I've watched like sixty five movies in a few months, oh. and I was making like a list recently, and just discovering like yeah, discovering not only films that I I was I really like or I'm really like not thrilled with, and I don't understand why they're on there, mm. but I've, I've discovered a ton of directors I never knew about, and that I I'm like you know I'm kind of giving myself film school some of it is just like entertainment some of it's like oh I feel like this is important to know this guy like my favorite filmmakers were influenced by this filmmaker who were influenced by this filmmaker you know yeah. um and I, I didn't realize that you know how much uh Quentin Tarantino was influenced by certain you know certain directors or mm-hmm. Wes Anderson was super into like a lot of like Japanese cinema from the 60s and, and uh, I've yeah. that's been my like go to mm. like filter lately it's like uh, it is an it is a kind of a cool way to cut through the noise you know well so, and you, and it's like you want something special go back you mm-hmm. want something but, new like go backwards don't don't look at like what's i uh, agree with that have you guys gotten disappointed by that though because i think that i i am in that boat of always wanting looking for work from specific directors and i think yeah you told me about kurosawa before i had seen much of his work yeah i i was also on a research binge of trying i haven't seen enough of his movies but um and same with tarkovsky but no early on when i was young i remember feeling that way about lord of the rings i loved lord of the rings so much and i wanted to find more so i wondered and attributed the success of Lord of the Rings to Peter Jackson. And I was like, okay, what else has Peter Jackson done? Yeah. And so then I go and watch King Kong. Mm -hmm. And that movie is pretty epic. And there's a lot of the same calling cards. Yeah. You know, that you can see his directing style. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's just, for me personally, not not the same. No. Like there's, it just doesn't compare. And it's... It's very cerebral, very intellectual. Yeah, like, but that... is an example of just loving that world of Middle Earth. And, you know, it's just so enjoyable to stay in that place. Well, it's so epic to to attribute that the enjoyment to, like, the director or the craft isn't the right place. It's really Tolkien and his writing, yeah. you yeah. know? Well, I think, I mean, I mean, we're going to get on a whole thing if we're going to start, start talking about Lord Keep of the Rings. Keep it short. But... You know, like <laughs> it's like there's sharp. there's so much that went into it. I really think it was like it was it was everyone together, literally putting putting just overtime, and they were so fully invested. Kind yeah, of a goal, and, like kind of like an age will never get back. It was like a little sliver in time pre-streaming mm-hmm. and post, like VFX limitations. I feel like the early 2000s, like late 90s to 2005 or It was six. a blend of practical and CGI. There was just oh, like a I don't know. I think we're in an exciting... I'm place. not saying we're not, but I'm saying like, you know, we talked about this in an earlier podcast. So like, is the traditional movie going experience dead? Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like then it was like we weren't on Netflix. Maybe we were doing the DVD thing on Netflix, but yeah. we weren't streaming. Yeah. And... But he, do you think that was really the con- like contributor? I mean more just like the people who made the movie. No, I know, but I, I mean, think they're like scrappy film crew putting in like 20 hour days. Yeah. They were, they had their heart in That's it. part of it, but I think there is. But think about the massive trilogy, epic things that were coming out in yeah. that one time frame. Matrix, Lord of the Rings. Hollywood, really what you're describing was Hollywood was going through a transition where they were 
having a harder and harder time to get people to go to the theater. They were losing box office reven- revenue. And so they're like, we have to think in franchise. We have to think in threes and sixes. And this is before comic book films yeah. had truly taken off and they had worlds of IP. Yeah. You know? Um, so that, that Which is, that's that time. I feel like Lord of the Rings and Star Wars laid a foundation for that they to certainly even do. happen. You know? Especially like, Star Wars. Would yeah. Marvel even be a success if those hadn't? Probably not. Because no one had taken comic book stuff seriously enough to really put, yeah. you know, yeah. high, high level, like, like make adults interested in comic books. Yeah. You know, that kind of attention. That's wild. Yeah. But no, have you guys ever had that like a similar experience where you've been disappointed by going well, yeah. like you put too much in it? What do you mean though? Like did so, going, like going backwards from a director's. Yeah, life. you're looking in that director's catalog. Oh, yeah, I think when I saw the Wizard of Loneliness, I was. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you remind me of the Wizard of Loneliness. <laughs> uh, I don't. I mean, if you were to go, I thought you were going to say you went backwards with Peter Jackson and you saw like some of his slasher films. Like, yeah, well, yeah, I, I, I pretty mean, much avoided Lord of the Rings. Films. You know, Lord of the Rings was like the first like thing yeah. he did. I, I, uh, I don't know if I, I probably have been disappointed. Disappointed. I've been more disappointed in the opposite, where a, a yeah. director's early work is so good, and mm-hmm. then as they go forward, like Steven Spielberg. You know, I would not even consider consider him one of my favorite filmmakers at all. But then I look back at like a lot of movies I grew up with. I'm like, uh, like he kind of made like masterpiece after masterpiece, and then yeah. he just started making movies about like a guy on a boat, and then there's like another movie that's just like a on. guy on a ship, and then it's just, it's just Tom Hanks just with a hat, and you're just like, all right, <laughs> like I don't care. Steven Spielberg <laughs> presents <laughs> Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks wears a hat. Wears a hat. <laughs> It's literally what I see in the trailer. I'm like, Steven Spielberg, are you just on autopilot? In the world. Well, they, used to, they used to say, you know, like he would do one for them and one for him. One for them and one for him. Like, where's that? the one for us? Yeah. Where's the movie? We grew up saying that. We used to, as filmmakers, we were like, oh, see, he's given, he's given Hollywood one gotcha. to make money to keep his name. And then he'll do one that he really loves. And the ones that he loved were good. Schindler's List was a masterpiece. I mean, it's amazing. It's incredible. I um, he was. They were making Jurassic Park simultaneous to Schindler's List. Did oh you know yeah, that? he wasn't. He Heard was not that. on set for most of Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park because he was in like Europe and stuff. Sure. That I didn't know. Yeah, mm. I did not know. No, he wasn't on set. I just knew that. Oh yeah, well, it was a struggle for him to oh, well, to bounce in the head spaces. You know, that's interesting. Yeah, imagine trying to. Balance those two stories in your no. head at one time. He's no. like, and then the dinosaurs come crashing in. <laughs> so, oh, sorry. wait. Uh, so, no, I mean, the Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's messed up. That's messed funny. up, guys. Not funny. We nope. just got canceled because you said that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. Don't cancel us. We're canceling ourselves right now. Okay. Cut that out. Cut it. Cut it. Cut it. Cut it.